Hello, it's Sarah. Today's video is a painting project. You guys, you know I love Renee Mullins. This is one of her pieces that I painted, let's see if I dated it, in 2020. So right around pandemic time. Painting has uh, been one of my go-tos for my serenity. And so today I'm going to be doing a project with you. So this is a pattern packet. This is the one that that gnome was. And it was a twofer. <clears throat> this is like a big welcome sign. I'm thinking of doing that because I can probably cut it on the Glowforge. But for today, I ordered the whole bundle of this bee stuff. So this is the Blooms and Bees Gnome. It's number 823 pattern packet. And it's as I'm going through this, I've been sealing some pieces. I want to show you how to do that. He's already been sealed. This is the, the gnome. I ordered the wood that goes with it. Now you can do this on a piece of paper with me if you just want to practice the techniques that I'm going to teach. Um, you don't have to have the wood kit. You can go find any other gnome out there in the craft stores. I know they're very popular right now and create your own bee gnome. But what I love about um, Plum Purdy Designs, which is uh, Renee Mullins Designs, is she does give you the option to buy the packet, the wood kit, and everything so that you come away with the exact piece that she's created. Um, and I always love that as a decorative painter. I wanted what I saw, and then you you were able to buy that exact wood piece, the you know, all that good stuff. So the first step whenever you're gonna paint is to create a barrier on the wood because most of this is, I would say this is pine. Um, it is a porous surface, so when you put a liquid on it, it the wood is going to suck it up a little bit. So we want to create a barrier so that when I paint, I'm painting onto that barrier and it seals the wood and keeps my paint from absorbing. This is the type I have, which is called Josonia's All-Purpose Sealer for surface preparation. This has been around for years. Obviously, I'm finally getting to where I have it upside down. Um, I also have this little bottle as well. I think it is available in Michaels now. They early on in crafting they didn't have a lot of the Joe Sonia products. It was more Delta, Americana, um, so and Deco Art, Deco Art Americana. Any wood sealer will do. Um, you can even use, and I did this early on too, a varnish and mix it in with your paint or you could just varnish it first and sand it. It will, it'll, it'll do the trick. And then when you seal, this is just an old, I do like, and I'm going to share a little bit about brushes too uh, with you guys, a soft bristle brush. And this is just a white, let's see what this is. It's a Langnickel. It's probably a decent brush, but I've just beat it up. You have to take care of your stuff, but um, I use it for base coating for bit because I don't generally paint a big thing that big, <laughs> you know, like if I were base coating something or like like I'm doing now sealing it I like a big bigger brush big size so this was considered a number six I would consider this a 12 in a lot of other brands seems like my voice is going to be a little bit weird today and I am look I have no water in my brush I'm just going into this sealer loading my brush completely and then I'm just, I, I move real quick, you guys. It, take your time, do it however you want. And I just really try to clean up any um, ridges. So when you lay down paint or sealer, you can create a ridge. So I just smooth it out so that there's no bumps on the surface. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do all of these pieces that came with the kit because this one is for the... Uh, what is it called? I'm looking for the picture. This is called the Queen Bee. This is pattern packet number 824. It comes with the directions and then I ordered the wood separately. Um, but I'm just going to create this little birdhouse, bee house, whatever you want to call it. Queen Bee. And I'm again, I'm just putting the sealer and it does not have to be perfect. I am not I don't get overly concerned about the prep. I've never loved it. I don't love prep at all, but it is important if you want your piece to look nice 
to do the prep work, so I'm talking myself into it. Um, this is cut by a glow forging because I'm familiar with it, but there was a little piece of paper still stuck to this because when you cut with a laser cutter, it will burn the it can burn the wood. So they put a uh, a top coat of paper to cover the wood while you cut it. And so if you find that if you've ordered any of the pieces, just make sure all of the paper is has. And I'm just doing both sides because I don't know which side I'll do. Whatever. I'm just. Then all these little extra pieces, let's see, see how it burned it? And this side isn't etched. That's the other thing, these are etched so that you don't even have to trace a pattern on. So she's really taking a lot of the work out of it for you. And guys, I'm telling you, you can come away with a really cute piece. You're not, there's no stress involved in these, in this project at all. I mean, you don't even have to trace your lines on. You you know right where to go. It's etched on there. I'm really not used to that. And I actually, when I ordered the piece, asked for her not to send me the etch stuff. And it's all etched. So she didn't even have it really available without it being etched. And I'm kind of glad now. <laughs> See? Um, but I'm just going to make sure there's no paper on here because sometimes... In my experience with the glow forge, nope, that looks good. And that burn does not matter at all. We're going to paint it. So I'm just getting some uh, sealer on here. All right, I think I got all my pieces for the birdhouse done. How about the stand? I think I did that stand. Yes, I did the stand. All right, I also have this big bee that I did. What else was in there? Did I? I got to do this flower. I bought, I bought the bundle, like I said. It was about 50 bucks shipped, so including shipping. Um, but I got the whole bundle. It was just too tempting the way she had it displayed on a like double-tiered tray. It was just so cute. So um, I went ahead and got it. Now, I'm just going to take what's left on my brush and kind of wipe it first. Get it as much of the thickness of it and then I'm going to put it in my water. My water bucket is disgusting. I've used it for a very long time but I'm just going to kind of leave that in the water for a sec while I continue telling you. So I'm just going to set this aside too. I could probably put that back. I'm I'm not against it. Some people think things get contaminated and there probably is certain things that would get contaminated and not work as good but I I would reuse that. So the next step, once you've sealed everything, so these are the pieces of the gnome, and the gnome is what I'm going to be painting with you guys. I'm just going to, I'll do the other pieces as I go because I'm just a very fast painter. But what I will actually be doing a tutorial for is this little gnome. I'm just making sure I have all the pieces. This, this, the nose, this is the nose. It makes it like three-dimensional. Um, there was a bee for his hat and a little flower right here. So that is the complete uh, gnome. So cute. It comes with a stand and that was one of the things she changed about the design. This one just has a little block glued to the back which works fine. I actually would, I think I need to glue like a rock to it to make it a little not tippy but um, it stands up just fine. But this comes with a stand, so all these pieces have stands. It's just adorable. So, now that your sealer is dry, well, I'm just gonna give it a hit with my heat gun. Not for any reason other than it, it'll just force the drying a little faster, just to make sure. And this is a, uh, for, this is very hot, you wouldn't, want to put this too close to your skin exactly. This is uh, for embossing. It's an embossing tool. I just want to make sure that the sealer is dry. I only did it a short time ago. And then I should have some sandpaper right here. Come on. Yes, I do. I haven't painted in a while, guys, so I have to find all my supplies. Some janky looking sandpaper. But you just want to do a fine sanding to get it smooth. To just 
what happens is uh, the sealer brings up the tooth of the wood. It brings out, anyway, I'm not a scientist, but it gets a little rough. So we just smooth it out again, and then we're ready to paint. You know, if this weren't laser cut, you might have some uh, other type rough spots. Sometimes if you buy wood at the craft store, it'll, be, it'll have rough edges. Not the case with this laser cut wood. That is one of the benefits of getting the kit. You know, I mean, it is really quality. Um, and I don't work for Renee. I don't know. I don't even, I don't think I've ever met Renee. I think I did see her one time at convention at a trade show. I probably spoke to her. Yeah, I think I have met her years and years ago. Um, but I just really like her whimsical style. These projects are stuff that there is no pressure. Anyone, and I'm telling you, anyone. If you want to, if you have the willingness, you can do it. Just takes a little bit of practice and you'll be there. And if you follow along with me, all the better. All right, was that it? This little guy. All right. Then we're going to be on to base coating. So I'm going to go away and I'm going to come back. That is your first step when you're getting ready. Now the directions, this isn't the directions, um, are, this is for the queen bee, bee house, but what you get with your pattern packet, you get a picture, which is lovely. You get to see the colors now because I don't have, say, aqua sky. That's a color of Deco Art Americana paint. I just grabbed something close enough. I have something called turquoise blue. No one's going to know that it wasn't Aqua Sky, you know? So I love having a picture. Um, this coral color, I haven't pulled the colors yet, purple and the coral. Let's see what she calls them. Coral Cloud. I know I don't have this. I'll, I'll bet you these are kind of newer colors. So I'm just going to grab what I have that looks close enough. And then the purple is called magenta. I do think I have magenta. Cactus Flower. Probably a green. I'll bet it's this green color. So I don't think it's necessary if you have some paints in your stash, you can make a yellow flower. You don't have to make it the exact colors that she made it. Just be close enough, you know. Um, but the picture is so helpful. She gives you a list of all the colors you're going to need, um, the brushes that she used. Then here's all her information, the website and um, ad email address. And then inside you get the directions. Oh, here's the pattern. So this is actually, ooh, that's the little one, but what is this? Oh, look, a bigger bonus pattern. OMG, so cute. I might be able to do this on the Glowforge. I didn't realize that. So you get a pattern, which was important before. If it wasn't etched, you, you would use the pattern to trace your lines on and get everything uh, drawn on so that you had a, kind of like a coloring book would be, you know, your line drawing. Then you have your directions, and it goes uh, wings, hat, nose, hands, because these are his little wings. He's, he's, a, he's a bumblebee, remember? So the pattern packet gives you all the, all the instruction you need to complete this project. So I'm just throwing it out there. This pattern packet is called Bee, uh, Blooms and Bees Gnome, number 823. And I'll be back. I'm going to paint this along with you guys. All right? Thanks for watching.